what targets are being explored in antibody therapy? That's a great question, actually. I think along with the targets, there's also a lot of antibody-based immunotherapies that have either been approved or are in the clinical trials. And just to take two steps back, I would explain even when we say antibody, that's a fairly generic term, and then there's kind of multiple different ways an antibody can be used to, uh, as a treatment you know, in the, in the drug development scheme, along with multiple different targets that could be used. How are antibodies being used in myeloma therapy? If we just go back to about 2015, when the first monoclonal antibodies were approved for multiple myeloma, that were, they were daratumumab and elotuzumab. They are what we call naked antibodies, meaning that they're basically monoclonal. They all look the same, and they help activate your immune system. But that immune system cells that help are, are mostly the what, call, what are called the natural killer cells and the uh, macrophages. And as time went on, I think, and different therapeutic approaches were tried, the next, the next class of drugs that were approved are what we call ADCs for short, the stands for antibody drug conjugates. Um, in these cases, you actually take the antibody and you add what's called a payload. And that payload is usually a chemotherapy that basically gets delivered selectively into myeloma cells and, and, and destroys the myeloma cells. Now, fast forward to 2022, a lot of the excitement are over what we call bispecific antibodies. And these are very similar to the initial monoclonal antibodies, except instead of having sort of like the two hands that, that kind of see the same door, in this case, one of the hands actually sees the myeloma cell and the other hand actually sees the, the immune T cell, right? And so that's how these antibodies work. Now, how do they actually detect or, or identify what is a myeloma cell or what is a T cell? And that's exactly where, you know, we get to your question about the different targets. And so going back, elotuzumab, for example, the target for that is, is sl it's called SLAMF7 or CS1. For daratumumab, it's CD38. So shortly after daratumumab was approved and developed, there were a number of other antibodies that recognized this, the same target. They're not exactly the same drug because they recognize a different part of that CD38 target. But um, closely after, it was, it was isatuximab, which, which has since actually also received FDA approval for relapsed refractory myeloma in combination with either pomalidomide or, or kyprolis. And there have been actually a, a one or two other ones also that are, are really further down the line in, in being able to be um, available for patients. For the, at least the one approved uh, antibody drug conjugate we have, um, it is BCMA. And I think a lot of people are, are used to hearing the term BCMA because that's also a target that's not only used for antibody drug conjugate, but also was used as the main target with the first trial in myeloma, CAR-T trial in myeloma using BS, it was BCMA. And then now a lot, most of the bispecific antibodies use the BCMA target to find the myeloma cell. Now, speaking of the bispecific antibodies, like I said, there's actually like two different hands. So one can recognize BCMA that's found on the cell surface of myeloma cells, and the other actually identifies a marker or a protein called CD3, and those are found on the surface of the T cells this time. And basically by shaking hands with the myeloma cell and the T cell, the T cell gets activated and does its job in you know, destroying the, the myeloma cell. In addition to BCMA, other targets are being explored for bispecific antibodies. Two of these newer targets are FCRH5, which is the target for the bispecific T-cell engager named Sevastimab, and GPRC5D, which is a target of Talquitimab, another bispecific antibody that currently is in clinical development. What is GPRC5D? I would say the most um, popular target for CAR-Ts and bispecific antibodies has been historically BCMA or B-cell maturation antigen, but there's been other targets being evaluated as well. And one is called GPRC5D, G-coupled protein receptor 5D is the long term for it, but we just call it GPRC5D. So it's also uh, highly expressed on plasma cells, relatively specifically to the myeloma cells. 
Although there is one other target that they have found um, where GPRC 5G is expressed, which is on the hair follicle, actually. And so these GPRC 5D targeted therapies, specifically by specific antibodies like talquitinib, have shown to be very effective in myeloma, uh, similar to, similar to teclistamab. But they are seeing some side effects, uh, primarily palmar, uh, plantar uh, skin changes, uh, basically um, areas, basically rash on the on the skin of the of the feet and the hands. Uh, also some nail changes as well that is being observed with some of the talquitinib studies. And so this is likely an on-target effect of the GPRC5D affecting uh, some of the areas of the skin. Why is CD38 chosen as a target? It's a protein that is expressed highly in the myeloma cells. I mean, that's natural to, to target. It's also a protein in the membrane of the cells that you mostly expressed in the myeloma cells and the B cells, but you have it in your lungs, you have it in, in your intestine. That's why pe some people get uh, um, respiratory tract uh, symptoms in the first uh, treatment. And that's why some of the patients get diarrheas and so on. You have it, as you hear, on, on your anchor cells, you have it on on the uh, platelets uh, origin cells, so you have it on uh, the erythroblasts. So, so it's ex expressed not everywhere, but in several places in the body, but mostly in the myeloma cells. Mm -hmm. uh, the expression of uh, CD38 in myeloma cells, uh, it's between 92 to 95% of all patients. The old patients don't express CD38 on, on their myeloma cells. CD38 actually can be found in other cells, including B cells. It is actually even found in red blood cells, which is why for those who, who, who may have been on it already, We've had to go special testing before starting it with, with the blood bank because then it can interfere with the uh, cross-matching. It is a great way of identifying plasma cells, but alone you can't, you have to use it with other markers, for example, to isolate a plasma cell or a myeloma cell. It's just that if you have myeloma, you have a lot of these you know, abnormal plasma cells and it destroys, most of what it does is destroy the, um, the abnormal plasma cells or the myeloma cells. What is SLAMF7? SLAMF7 works maybe a little differently. I think we still don't know exactly how it works. It is, it is a target that's, that's uniquely found on, on the myeloma cells or the plasma cells, but interestingly enough, it's also found on, on T cells and, and um, even uh, what's called T regulatory cells. And one of the ways we think it works is not only does it activate your own innate natural killer cells to to find the myeloma and destroy it. But we also think that it kind of activates directly by binding some of these T cells to make a shift between the T cells that are, that are pro and, and, and against sort of um, immune uh, activation. And that, that plays a second role in, in, in the way we think evotuzumab works. What does BCMA stand for? It stands for B cell maturation antigen. For the most part, it's, it's on B cells and, and, and plasma cells, and, and it actually is involved in the natural sort of growth of the B cell from precursor. And it, it actually, we know that there's specific what we call ligands or, or natural proteins in the blood that actually are, as part of normal physiology, are supposed to bind in and activate the T cells through maturation. What is FCRH5? FCHR5 is another new target that's being evaluated in multiple myeloma. Uh, the, we probably had the most data with this drug called Sevastamab, um, which is being developed um, by Genentech. It's a bispecific antibody that targets a T cell and, and FCHR5 on the myeloma cell. And this data, early data, has been reported at several uh, congresses or meetings um, um, in myeloma, the early data looks very promising, uh, very similar overall response rates to bisous antibodies targeting BCMA and GPRC5D. It's nearly ex exclusively expressed also on plasma cells as well, so it looks like to be a very promising target with, with low or little off-target effects.